Hi guys, Michael Bell here again, um, and today I'm going to do a quick video based on a piece of hardware. So we're going to be looking at the Korg Nano Control 2, um, which I got probably around three weeks ago. Um, I'm probably not using it to its full capacity, but essentially this now controls all my MIDI. You've got all these faders, um, silos, records, buttons, knobs. Uh, transport controls, all those sorts of things. Um, I actually only use kind of four faders at the moment um, and I'm basically going to show you kind of how I set it up because it was a little kind of tricky I suppose you could say but once you've got everything installed you need it's pretty damn easy to use and honestly I find it better than Touch OSC or kind of any iPad controls. Um, personally I used them for years and I just had like a custom layout that I did on Touch OSC for uh, modulation and expression um, I just wanted something a little more physical that I just put it literally in front of my keyboard here as I'm playing I can basically adjust um, modulation as I, as I go and on live on the fly and record it straight in so um, this is the product here um, I personally I bought it from Amazon so £39.10p um, and uh, I think for the price it's like a really solid piece of hardware it feels nice um, doesn't feel cheap and plasticky and kind of horrible there's enough kind of um, movement in the faders if you like between kind of uh, 1 and 127 on the on the MIDI so as you're moving the controls up it doesn't kind of jump too far um, between 1 and 127 so you get a nice curve if you like um, on your kind of uh, on your modulations and, and things like that so when you go to the when you get the product, you plug it in. Um, it will detect it, but I was kind of like, well, how do I actually configure it? You know, um, so I in Pro Tools just jumped in to the the normal kind of setup window, went to my um, uh, peripherals menu and changed the whole. Um, basically, got rid of the surround panel, which I use for um, V Control Pro. Uh, v Control Pro is it? I completely lost the plot. Yeah, V-Control Pro. Um, that I do use on the iPad. That's another app I talk about another time, but it basically, when I'm in the mix, I can just kick back, grab the iPad, and adjust the kind of final mix and the final faders. But that's another video. So, um, yeah, I set this up and basically mirrored the same setup as, as um, what V-Control Pro uses, but for the Nano Control. And then I could kind of uh, control the transport, but couldn't really do much else, and I didn't buy it to really control the transport. Um, I'm quite happy with the keyboard kind of shortcuts for that. So when you jump to the Korg website, in between it telling you it's convenient, compact, you know, it's easy to use, immediate use, um, lots of images and pictures of kind of what it looks like, um, what it does, um, and those sorts of things. Really what you're going to want when you get it is to go right down to the bottom of the page where you've got here um, drivers. So... In the driver section of the website, um, the manual's there should you need it. Um, I probably should look at it, but I'm not really a person who likes manuals. Um, basically, what you're going to want is the um, the driver that Korg have made, the USB MIDI driver for, for, the, for the Korg that they've made. For me, that's going to be for the Mac. Um, and you're going to want basically the, um, the Korg control editor, um, again, for the Mac. If you're on a Windows system, just grab the Windows equivalents, and it's basically going to be exactly the same process. Um... Once you've installed those, those the, both the driver and the software, it's kind of when the when the fun starts in terms of you configuring your your interface. So it's worth noting that this can basically be done on the fly. So if you're in Pro Tools and you're you're writing a, a queue or something like that, and you think, ah, I want I want some I want to I want to put another MIDI CC on, you haven't got to start closing your session or or mucking around. You can change that parameter straight within the core editor and and it, it basically saves the session and it maps it maps into Pro Tools straight away. So um basically what you're gonna want to do if we go to applications um it gives you a little Korg there's a little Korg folder that it creates um in the Korg editor. Where is it now? I've just completely lost it. Core control editor, right. So this is the main kind of um part that you're gonna use to actually control it. Um, as you can see here now on the screen each one of these buttons has now got a configurable either CC value or you can change it to be like a program type or change MIDI channel. Basically anything to do with MIDI can be configured on this on this uh, control surface. But it doesn't start like that. And this is where it kind of confused me. I couldn't, I couldn't click anything or I couldn't actually really do a lot. It didn't seem to make much of a difference when I actually changed any parameters in here. I couldn't, I could click on things, but I couldn't choose like a, a CC number or I couldn't do anything. 
So what you've got to do, what I did anyway, I opened this factory settings folder and I loaded, which one is it now? Let's just put it in a list view. I loaded the, which one did I load now? I think it was this one, the scene data control. Let's just load that up a second. Yes, that's exactly the one there. I just didn't want to actually tell you the complete wrong one. So I loaded the um, Korg Nano 2 scene data. And that then basically gets you into this menu and you can start changing your, your MIDI CC. So um, for those of you who are not kind of familiar with MIDI CCs, if you're getting into composing really any type of music, but especially orchestral music, you're going to need to use them basically all the time. Um, so CC7 is basically volume. So instead of going into contact all the time, especially if you're in a VE Pro setup or something like that, um, we can just move, in my case, the first fader here as I'm playing or before I'm playing in most cases, which adjusts the actual volume coming out of contact. It's not, I wouldn't use this as like um, a performance kind of modulation. You don't really want to turn the volume of your, of your player down. Um, it's better to use basically MIDI CC1 and CC11 um, because the libraries will actually then, you know, cross fade between samples at different fortes to get like a different le a level of loudness naturally, as opposed to you just turning the whole thing down. So MIDI CC1 is modulation, which previously I had to basically use all the way over here. Um, now I can just actually adjust modulation as I'm playing. Um, and C MIDI CC11 is uh, expression. So a lot of the East West libraries use expression over modulation. Um, some of the kind of Spitfire audio, um, the dynamics will be more in the in, on the mob wheel on CC1, whereas expression will perhaps, for the Evo Grid libraries, for instance, the patches can get a little crazy when you start moving the CC11 up, so the performance changes. Um, but every library is going to be different, and this kind of you're going to learn that as you go. Um, CC64, for those who are wondering, is basically a hold. Um, it's a sustain hold. It's a sustain on essentially. So if you're Say if you're trying to do like a, you want a pedal note, so you've just recorded in like a sustained note and you want to continue that note playing, um, but you don't want to have to kind of program the note to go on for however many bars while you're jamming. You can basically just play the note. In my case, move the full fader um, all the way up to, to kind of 127. I think it activates a 64. Um, and the note will just keep playing basically until you stop. So you can then move to another instrument and kind of uh, play around. I'll show you that. I'll demo you that in a second. So... Once you've kind of set these up and you've clicked through any of these different things, you'll notice the values, they change in the middle here. Um, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen, like you can see what I'm pointing at, but yeah, anyway. So the CC values uh, change here, so you can literally change that to 1 if you want. Click off of it and it changes to 1, but I want to keep that to 7. Then all you've got to do, once you've set up kind of what you want, so yeah, bear in mind that I'm literally using only 4 controls at the moment. I will make this a lot more kind of in depth as I go along, but I'm right smack bang in the middle of a project. So I'm just trying to get it done and get this kind of as quick as, as, as possible configure for what I need right now. So once, you're, once you've configured what you want, all you do is go to communication and you're going to write scene data. Um, and that basically connects through to the um, controller and writes what you've just changed. Um, and you can do that, like I say, with Pro Tools open. So now if I come into my session, say we take like a, um, what should we do here? Let's take, let's take like a full strings uh, section here. So what I can do straight away basically is I can change by holding down. So that's, that's volume coming out of contact on the first fader here. So MIDI CC1. I wonder if I go to the other camera, actually it might be easy for you to see me. Um, so yeah, this is me moving CC1. Um, then we've got modulation. So if I put that right up for the volume, Modulation is how kind of how hard the players are playing. Let's just leave it there. Then we can do some say expression here as well. That hold note, say this probably a, a, a harmonic's a good idea. You know, if I want like a high E, I'll be moving that up and I let go. 
it just stays held. Um, the only irritating thing with Pro Tools, as soon as you click, it doesn't do this in every door, but as soon as you click, so say we've got this, this kind of pedal note, this high sustaining forever, basically it's harmonic, and I want to go to like a piano for instance, it stops, which is really annoying. So what you've got to basically do, you have got to record it in. So what you do is you just, you kick off a record. Let's just get a second. In. Play your E. With the pedal up, basically, then let go. That's going to sustain on forever. And then when you come to play the performance back. Kick in a second there. Now I've moved up to a to a cello, um, and it's going to basically it will just sustain um, now forever, so I can I can basically play over it as much as I want. whatever you want to kind of put on top of it or you can move to a piano for instance if you wanted to get like a and the note's still playing so it's kind of useful if you're jamming if you're not really too sure like um what to put for your sustain or you want to just create like a big atmosphere um it's a useful thing to do um so yeah it's really there's nothing really configured in pro tools really for me to show you for this the, the kind of uh, the core editor controls everything in that respect for you um so i mean i might revisit this in the future and try and show you guys a little more in depth perhaps how i'm using it um in the future um but for the moment yeah it's 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 pretty much just down to uh cc7 1 11 and 64 that i'm using on the faders um and yeah as i showed you there between all of them you know so if we jump into um let's have a look some some legato low strings here That's just me moving modulation. So yeah, I mean, I just find all that sort of thing a lot easier to do um, rather than kind of trying to muck around um, with a kind of mob wheel here or have your hands up here. You know, you can really, you can play. You can play sections, you know, while you're actually modulating what you're trying to do. So... I really like that, I think it's great. But yeah, so um, yeah, some of the conversation on the channel, by the way, has been great. Um, thanks for everyone getting uh, getting involved there. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, I'm glad the videos have kind of been helpful for people. That's what I'm kind of setting out to do. Um, so yeah, please keep following, keep the conversation going. Um, some, of the, some of the conversation we're having was around keyboard controllers. Um, so... I'm actually using the um, the Keystation 88 by M Audio, which I'll be honest, I don't particularly like too much. Um, I find if you're, I have to go in a lot and, and edit performances, especially piano parts, um, it which isn't necessarily a problem, but just sometimes if you want a loose kind of feel and an emotional cue particularly, which is this film's all about, um, it's nicer to actually feel that and play that in, you know, and then edit, make it, it kind of uh, fix your, your playing, um, which for me I have to do quite a lot because I'm not the most amazing player. But um, yeah, um, I just wanted something with a little more kind of velocity curves and perhaps, yeah, velocity curve control and kind of a little more sensitive in terms of um, me playing. You know, if I, if I load up a piano here, for instance, let's take a less reverb one. You know, if I'm trying to get... I mean, I have to touch, I'm barely touching it. It's not really... Before, you, you can't really perform oh, distortion 
So yeah, I I find it just a little. I don't know. I want to change it, but I'm not too bothered because of things like this with the nano control. I'm not too bothered with sort of um, knobs and faders on the keyboard because to me that's they're here for forty quid. Um, so um, yeah, it's an interesting conversation. You know, keep 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 uh, keep that coming, guys, and let me know how what you're using. I know there's various different kind of uh, iPad apps and all sorts of things that we can use to control our systems. Um, so yeah, I'm giving this one a go. Um, let me know what you think. Thanks for checking in again, um, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Um, so from me, Mike here, uh, take care. Um, and hopefully I'll see you kind of around about this time next week.